Hello everybody, today we will have a super interesting interview with Dean, a digital nomad who traveled in around more than 100 different countries. Dean will talk about what is a digital nomad, what he thinks about dropshipping and digital nomad, and actually uh, he will introduce all his niche and what he thinks about both niches together and in traveling in the world in general. Hey Dean, how are you? I am good, thank you for having me. Great. So I prepared some uh, questions that was that were really interesting for me, um, and I'm sure that from there we will go to different directions, and it will be super interesting. And I'm super excited about this interview because actually, Dean, uh, I don't know if you know this or not, but Dean also affected a lot uh, me because he has a digital nomads community in Israel, which really inspired me, and in the last six months I started to travel and uh, work remotely from all, all over the world and thanks again uh, for this. So tell us a little bit about yourself before we get started. Well first thank you very much. Uh, it's, it's the biggest compliment I can receive. Um, you know I work a lot to inspire people to work remote and travel the world and to hear it from you and to know that I was able to, to change and move something that's, uh, that's amazing. My job here is done. Um, <laughs> so I'll tell you about myself. Um, so my full name is Nimrod Din Kuchel. I was originally from, from Israel and I define myself as a digital nomad. It's not what defines me, but I definitely define myself as a digital nomad. I've been uh, working remote and traveling the world um, for more than six years now. I traveled to my 100th country recently and I'm currently in Sydney, Australia, where I'm, I really enjoy the country and I really enjoy staying here. I'm currently... Uh, the WeWork space. And then I do a lot of things. My main driver, uh, my main income, my day-to-day my -day, um, job is uh, customer success management. I do customer success management as a consultant. Customer success management is um, very much the like customer support, but also with the proactive side of the business. So taking care of churn and K meet, meeting some KPIs like um, upsells and customer satisfaction and this is something I love to do. I love engaging with different clients and different businesses. So I do it as a, as a consultant with various tech companies. And then I'm also now a co-founder of Globe Gliders, uh, which I'll be happy to, to talk and tell you more because this is a service for digital nomads uh, that basically simplify everything that has to do with accommodation and office spaces around the world. It's something I've been working on for several months now and I'm super excited. I'm just about to launch it. And as you mentioned, I founded Digital Nomads Israel, which is uh, Israel community for digital nomads, one of the largest communities and most active communities in the digital nomad space. And it's something I'm very, very proud of. Um, I, I created or I, I enabled and empowered a lot of people to get together. And it's, I think it's my greatest achievement to, to help others to, to become digital nomads. So this is kind of, you know, in a long story, who I am and what I do and what I'm excited about. Can you, before we get started, I'm not sure if everyone really knows what is a digital nomad. Can you, and, and I know that this is something that everyone uh, can think that it's something a bit different, but can you explain from your point of view, view what is a digital nomad, what does it mean for you? I, I like to stick to uh, kind of the international internationally agreed definition which says that a digital nomad is a person who can perform uh, his her their job and duties via digital means and being location and independent of the location right so uh, i also see remote workers as digital nomads uh, for the, the sheer fact that if i tell you that you you must travel or you cannot stay where you at uh, in order to be a digital nomad i take out out of digital, being digital nomad, the most important element, which is freedom, freedom of movement and freedom to choose where you're at. Um, so a digital nomad is really any person that can do their job and generate income regardless of their location and using digital means. So if you do drop shipping, uh, which is exact, you know, one of, I think the best examples and it's, uh, it's been a huge uh, driving force in the digital nomad work, uh, digital nomad world and remote work. So this is exactly that, where you, you don't have a physical location, you're not tied to an office or to a fulfillment center, and you can service your clients and build your store 
from Thailand or from Medellin. So actually, a digital nomad, digital nomad is someone who can work from everywhere, and it doesn't matter if they are they are freelancers or they actually work in a company, but if they can do it remotely, so that's a digital nomad for you. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, the, the the form, the type of work or contract doesn't doesn't define you as a digital nomad or not. That's what changes. Cool. I think that I really agree with it because. That's something that we really stick to in Autodesk. In some cases, it's much easier to just create offices, for example, in Israel, and bring their people, and then everyone will come to the office, and it will be much easier to manage them and everything. But I really think that that's a huge benefit for people to work from different places. Also, for me, now, when I moved, like, for half a year, it was not because I wanted only to travel, but also because it's something that can open your mind and help you to work from different places. Like for me, I feel that it's really giving me more uh, ideas, more motivation and everything. Absolutely, and I really agree with it because world travel, and, and I did, uh, I traveled in an extreme manner, um, shaped me, like changed me, changed the person I am, what I believe, um, how I perceive the world and what I think of politics or wars and, and different cultures and skin color and beliefs. So. Um, I think uh, the gift of, of travel is something that uh, any person should, should enjoy, regardless of their source of income. Cool. By the way, from our uh, research, more than 40% of dropshippers started the business because they wanted to travel and work remotely. That's something good. Cool. Um, I, I don't blame them. There was, um, sorry, there, was, there is a big Harvard research that's been conducted over many years and uh, show that the biggest uh, benefit that in, uh, employee wants uh, is to uh, have the freedom to work from home or work remote. Uh, especially nowadays, when if you big if you live in a big city, the traffic is impossible. The rent prices are so high; uh, it makes almost no sense to to live in cities like San Francisco or New York anymore. Do you think that it's hard to work remotely? It's harder than just come to the office and work always from the same place. Yeah. Anything and everything has plus and minuses. Um, you know, for, for the individual, it depends on the personality. And I know a lot of people who, they, who doesn't want to work remote. They enjoy walking to the office and meeting with the peeps and like having uh, a beer after work. And, and I appreciate it because I'm, I'm seeking community all the time and wherever I go. Um, but there are other, many other benefits. Okay, yeah, the freedom, the people I meet, the experiences, making my dream, dreams come true when I'm in my 30s and what, not waiting for 60 or 70 when I hopefully retire and be healthy enough to do these things. So it's, it's a very individual decision and answer. For me, it's absolutely outweigh uh, working in the office. I still go to the office of my clients twice a year to visit uh, the teams and meet the people and to hang out with them. Um, but I have the freedom to choose wherever I want. If tomorrow I tell my clients, hey, I want to sit in your office, they would love to accept me. So the, the biggest, uh, I think, the, the biggest sensation of being a digital nomad is not my ability to travel. It's the opposite. It's my ability to stop whenever I want and say, hey, I enjoy Sydney. I'm going to stay here for a month or two. Or I enjoy being walking to the office now. I'll start walking to the office every day. Um, and, and by the way, you can see that I can work from Bondi Beach and I can work from a coffee shop, but I choose to go to WeWork because I have events here and community and office space. And, you know, you see, I, I, I dress up, although I don't meet with clients. So I put my, my button white shirt to, to feel like I'm going to the office to have this work vibe. Um, so that, that, that's, that's my opinion on this. Uh, and of course, if you are um, a company, the benefits are different between letting your clients, uh, sorry, letting your employees to work with more than us. Well, if you already talked about locations, do you have any like favorite countries, locations that you usually go, <laughs> like, that you come back to these places? Uh, there are a few. There are a lot of, I, I can tell you really after 100 countries, uh, it's beautiful out there and so, uh, so many places that I like and enjoy. Uh, I, I feel like I'm living, I'm constantly living in a FOMO and a fear of missing out because I want to be everywhere and anywhere. But if I really need to stay a few places, then to travel, Japan, 
Iceland, Cuba are the most amazing destination for me because of the culture, because of the nature, um, very unique. And then places I enjoy going back is definitely Sydney, which is, I think the quality of life is just incredible. Um, Bali, in uh, uh, Canggu specifically in Bali, Indonesia, um, for the sense of the community, there is a great group of people who are hustlers, hard worker, like-minded people. And I think it's very important for people like us who work remote to have um, people with the same state of mind around us. It also motivates me to, to hustle, to create, to build things. So I enjoy Bali a lot. Um, and I, I enjoy Medellin. Medellin, Colombia is also one of my very, very, very favorite spots. Uh, as a digital nomad and, and, and as a, just a person. It's an amazing city that strikes a, a crazy balance between cost of living and quality of living, good, good weather, music, culture. Uh, highly recommended. Nice. Okay, cool. Um, when it comes to these places, you usually work from, like, as you said, from rework, usually you find yourself for the co-working spaces? Um, so I have a WeWork global membership and so wherever there is WeWork, I, I will try to go there. Um, but also that's a segue to talk about globegliders.com. Uh, that's my new venture. And this is basically a, a flat fee monthly membership service. So you pay one time every month and now you have access to accommodation all over the world and working space as well. So now that I have uh, Globe Gliders out in the wild, I, I use this to access co-working spaces everywhere I go, um, but it changes. I go where there is people. Um, th that's where I go. I want to be surrounded by people. I want to meet fellow digital nomads. Um, so it changes. You know, if you go to Stockholm in Sweden, you'll find the people in the co-working spaces. But if you go to Medellin, you'll find them in the coffee shops. Nice. I'm very good at working where there's like hustle and bustle around me. I don't mind the noise. I don't mind people um, walking around. It's actually helped me to focus, I think. Nice. Cool. Um, about your project, what do you mean by different co-workings? Like you just found the places where most of the nomads go there and you just like found there some contacts with the co-working that you can start and just go there if you have the membership. Yes, we, we collected, uh, right now we have over a thousand accommodations in more than 120 countries. And we have uh, hundreds of co-working spaces around the world. These are places that we vetted, that we know that uh, digital nomads enjoy being there. Um, these are, uh, you know, good internet, comfortable sitting. So we vetted these places, entered them into our network. And with this one single membership, you now have access to all these places around the world. Today, you're in Kiev, Ukraine for 10 days. Then you decide to go to Moscow. You just go on, on the on Globe Gliders. You say, I'm going to Moscow. You book your dates and done. You don't need to swipe your credit cards. You don't need to, to worry about anything. Amazing. It's, I think, Thank it's you. one of the hardest things to come to a place and find a place that you really like to own there. And you also need to pay, so it sounds really... Cool. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a challenge that uh, I face so many times because I travel fast. I'm, I'm in a different country almost every week and I meet a lot of digital nomads and everyone talk about, it's, it might not be a hassle, but just a, just a little bit of a headache to like find a place and where it's good, it's for digital nomads, it's a party hostel, is this Airbnb legit? Uh, and we, we're solving this, uh, this problem plus provide a flat fee so you can manage, you know, your budget for, for the entire year and if you want and uh, we build community around it. So that's, it's going to be very excited also. Exciting to meet other gliders, what we call um, us, um, around the world. It's, it's really the most um, exciting thing for me right now. And I'm hyped about uh, what we're doing at Global Gliders. That's amazing. Um, let's go for some technical details that will be really interesting for our audience and then we will jump into some uh, uh, like more dropshipping and how dropshipping linked to a uh, digital moment. So um, what, about, what, what do you do about 
uh, banks. Do you have any online banks like PayPal, Payoneer, or do you just use the banks in Israel or any other country? Because for me, I found that it's really hard to communicate with banks in Israel, for example, when uh, I travel. So what yeah, are your thoughts? Uh, yeah, it's a very good question. And, you know, it, it, it's a topic that comes up quite often in the community. Uh, first, I want to say to whoever, whoever watches, um, if you have any question, if you want to know more, um, feel free to comment below, ask me questions. I'm an open book. I'm really happy to, to talk about anything and, and assist everyone and anyone there um, to, to, to take part of the digital nomad movement and lifestyle. So feel free to do so. Now, when it comes to banks, yes, I do have PayPal. I do have, uh, I have PayPal for my business and I also have Pioneer. And I have a couple of banks. I have a bank in Israel, uh, where I'm from originally, and I also have a bank account in the States. So to be quite honest, my USA bank um, pretty much solved all my, my problems because it's, it's a great banking system, um, very stable, credit cards are amazing, uh, easy to communicate them, service is great. So not a lot of problems. Um, so I, I know, you know, Payoneer is great and PayPal is great, uh, quite expensive sometimes. Um, but yeah, my main, so, so yeah, my main driver is, is my USA bank. This is where I bank and- um, And you don't have any problems to communicate with them remotely? No, not at all. To be honest, I, I barely talk to them. Um, it's all paperless, so everything goes through the emails. I maybe talk to them once, once a year, and I, I also visit the States once a year, so sometimes I go to the bank, but everything is online, um, and out of my experience, banking in the States is good, it's modern, um, so for me, it's been a bliss. I, I don't have, you know, I don't do job shipping, so the amount of transactions that I deal with is not high, I don't have high volume of transactions, so maybe I have different needs. But okay. for my personal banking and my business, um, the USA Bank is the best solution. Whoever has access to its banks, I think it's, it's, it's a great banking system to, to use. And moreover, the credit cards, especially for those who travel or has high level of expenses as a drop cheaper because 60, 70% of your um, uh, of the transaction might be payouts to your vendors then you can pile a lot of miles and points and get money back. I'm talking about four or 5% back, which is big money. That's true. So, well, I, I have something also here. So first about what you said about the uh, points, it's something, it's a really good point. You can pay to everyone using these credit cards and get a lot of points. You can actually make most of your flights uh, for free if you're not uh, dealing with those uh, tons of uh, <laughs> flights. But um, one tip here, if you go and do this, so call PayPal, tell them that you are going out of your country and you are going to countries X, Y, Z, and then they will not block your account and will not do any problems uh, when you travel. It's really yeah, it's, important. It's a, good, it's a good tip because PayPal is the only uh, financial provider that I had problems and it's been really difficult to deal with it. And it's part because of how they manage their security. Uh, Payoneer has been great, uh, especially if you have an, uh, an account manager assigned to you. Uh, it's super easy. Their service has been really uh, frictionless for me. So about Payoneer, Payoneer that doesn't do any problems. And if you want, you can also, I will attach a link under this video so we can uh, join them with some uh, discounts. Um, Something that's really interesting for me, I have now some problems with it, so maybe now that I can get free consultant from you. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, about a phone number. What do you do with phone number? Do you switch SIM card any, uh, any country that you move or you have? What's the solution there? Um, again, I, I use Google Fi. Um, and Google Fi is... Um, is a single SIM card that gives you internet in like 160 countries around the world. So it's really one SIM card, one US phone number that goes with me everywhere and anywhere. Um, 
it's I think it's still only for US residents, but there are ways around it. So you can log in with VPN, put some friend's address, or even uh, you know one of these virtual box or something like that, um, and and get it. I think whoever can get it, it's amazing, especially if you travel often. Um, the, it's not cheap, but it's for me it's an investment. You know that I, if I touch down in the Maldives or Oman or Dubai or Australia or even Samoa in the Pacific Islands, I touch down and I have Wi-Fi and I can talk to my clients and I can do my work. It's worth. I, I drop maybe a thousand dollar a year on on Google Fi, so that's a good solution. For those who travel slower and change a place once a month, I would typically recommend buying a SIM card every because if you go to Bali or Thailand, you pay five ten dollars, you get ten gigs of data, which is plenty, I think, uh, given that most places has good Wi-Fi. So if Google Fi is a good investment if you if you travel often or if you need to have the same phone number and that goes back you know you ask me about access to like my bank account so sometimes I need to get like a text message mm -hmm. so by having a single phone number that solves a lot of problem with PayPal with Payoneer because everyone has two-factor authentication and the great thing about Google Fi I feel like I'm doing a commercial here but it's not um, you can get the text messages to your phone as well, to your computer, because it's, um, it's also internet based. So even if my phone is not available, I get a text message in my Gmail inbox and makes it very easy to, to use these codes. So yeah, that's my, so I, my advice, I'm giving like a super long question to something, answer to something very simple. If you travel often, um, Google Fi is the thing. If you don't change places uh, more than, or if you change places at least five, six times a year, or sorry, between five to 12 times a year, just get a local SIM card, cheaper and easier. Oh, cool. thank you. Um, so yeah. I feel like I need to, to do all this answer from the beginning because it's like super long and boring. I think that uh, we can continue and talk about digital nom di digital nomad in general for hours, but I want to jump a little bit about uh, more into dropshipping, which is more relevant to our audience and digital, digital moment together. So did you meet uh, any dropshippers during your traveling? How many did you meet? How they work? Can you tell us a little bit about this? Yeah, well, I meet, I meet, I meet plenty, plenty, plenty of uh, dropshippers. Of course, they never tell me what's their niche um, <laughs> or what they sell. Sounds very fishy, but um, no, I meet a lot of drop shippers. Um, yeah, it, it's a, in my opinion, drop shipping is a valid business, and it's a valid business because I see people making a lot of money with drop shipping. And uh, I don't think everyone makes a lot of money. And I think even if you have a drop shipping business to make five hundred dollars or a thousand dollars or two thousand dollars a month, it's a nice uh, stream of income given the amount of work needed. Um, and yeah, I meet them everywhere I go, especially. In, Thailand, um, Bali, Canary Islands, Medellin, uh, where those are the centers of nomads. I definitely meet them. Um, yeah, I mean, what, what's the question again? I just wanted to first, like, let's say that in average, well, what I see and I know is that in average, dropshippers usually do for full time. Like average dropshipper, I'm not talking about uh, like advanced dropshippers, but someone who doing it for like one year. Uh, they usually go between two to three thousand dollars a month. Do you think that this amount of money can give you the opportunity to uh, be a digital moment and really work from different countries and switch places? I, I want to say one before I say yes to, to the question is that. Um, what I do see, I, I don't know how much people make, the drop shippers that I meet, but I can definitely tell that those who succeed and have a, a, a thriving business and a growing business are those who take it seriously and it's not like a sidekick, you know what? Like, um, as a sidekick, they will make a few hundred of dollars, but if you don't maintain it, it's not going to grow uh, out of itself uh, unless you're very lucky. Um, so like anything in life, I believe that luck is the result of hard work. And I see that those who like put time into the businesses, into their storefronts, the website, the advertisement, um, they, they're being rewarded. 
Um, and when it comes to the question about budgeting, two to three thousand uh, dollars, if you're talking net, this is uh, amazing. Uh, $3,000 you can live anywhere in the world very comfortably, maybe not California or New York, but even in Australia, uh, 3,000 US can get you a nice place and very high quality of life. Um, so, so absolutely, I mean, it's, it's no secret why people like to go to Bali and Chiang Mai. It's, you can live very nicely on $1,000 and even less. Um, but I have a lot to say about financials and how much is enough, you know. Um, yes, you can live off a thousand dollar, but if you're 22 and you just travel the world, it's okay. But if you're my age, I'm 37 now, turn 38 in a few months, um, I want to save money. I want to build my future. I need to think about what's next because I, I, I'm not going to be a digital nomad all my life. Yeah. Okay, cool. At first, I really agree about the like if you don't maintain the business, like people sometimes think that they, they can just start the business and then work on it uh, like one hour a day and then it will run and make the money. It will not happen. So I really agree with it that you should continue and work on your business. But the good thing from, my thing, from what I saw is that you can continue to work the eight or 10 hours a day or even sometimes you can even not work for one day and just make the work, the work in other day. Uh, but the good thing is that you can also travel uh, during this uh, just the free time and see other places. And by work, it doesn't mean that you need to spend the 10 hours a day. You need to use tools and automation and, and people. You, you bring a virtual assistant, you bring more people on the team. If you don't know marketing, hire someone who knows marketing. If, uh, customer service is not something you enjoy doing, let someone who enjoys it do it. Um, you know, Auto T DS, a tool that helps you with your dropshipping store and sourcing and, and placing uh, listings. So it saves time, but it grows your business. It's doing. It doesn't mean that you need to do it yourself. That's all. Um, you have... Um, first, I wanted to ask, do you feel that uh, dropshippers, if they go like, out of their uh, regular office or city, it can help them to get more ideas or get more connections during the travel, during the digital moment? My instinct is to say absolutely. Um, what I love about the digital nomad community uh, is the sense of sharing. Yes, no dropshipper will tell you their niche, but they will share with you other tips and information, and it's not just dropshippers. Um, that's why I like to go to a, a co-working space in Canary Island or in Changu, because people just, everyone sit down on their laptops, hustling, building their own business, whether it's a coach, coaching business or SEO business or dropshipping, and they help each other, and you go for a sunset drink, and you talk about business, you talk about entrepreneurship, you talk about building amazing life, not, not just business, business, building an amazing lifestyle for yourself. And it's empowering and it's educating. I was not born a digital nomad. I, I learned from all the people that I met along the way. Um, you know, Globe Gliders and the community, that th these things happened while I was in, in places like Bali and Chiang Mai. Uh, where I met people that are doers and it gave me the motivation to like, okay, I'm going to hassle, I'm going to kill it and I'm going to do it. And, and this is how businesses start. So it's definitely yes. And if you can surround yourself with the right people and good people, do it. There, there is a beautiful say, uh, and I'm hijacking the microphone here, uh, that you are the average of your five closest friends. And I really believe that if you surround yourself with successful people, successful in your domain, successful where you want to be successful, uh, that's going to lift you up. It's going to pull you uh, to higher uh, achievements and push you to do better. I agree with it. Usually these people who travel and work are really inspiring. And the small talks that you have with these people, it doesn't matter if they are really directly in your niche or do something a little bit different. You can learn from them so much. Really it, it, I enjoy meeting people are not in my niche. Why? Because I'm building a website, okay, Globe Lighters. I don't know much about SEO, but when I'm sitting in a co-working space in Bansko, 
Bulgaria, I can just raise my hand, my hand. It's like, hey guys, anyone here know anything about SEO? And the next thing I know, I'm grabbing uh, a beer with a girl that all she does is SEO and she explains to me everything and we might have business together. So think about it that you, you're sitting in, in a room with a lot of talented people from different disciplines. So that's, that's, that's amazing. Cool. Uh, yeah, I agree with it. For example, we have... Also, if you, if, if, you, if you currently live in an expensive city, if you live in London or New York or even Miami, which is not very expensive, but you still spend a couple thousand dollars, you can go to a place like Chiang Mai, live super nicely on $1,200, have the right people with the right mindset around you and save more money. It's like, you, you, I, I only see profit. I only see benefits. And also, if you don't like it, you can always go back to Miami. So you, are, you are free. That, you need to embrace this freedom. We are so lucky to, to live in this time. And it also comes from nowhere, these people that you meet. Like, they're just there like you and come to also meet another people or also do their work and help others and get some information. I, I love to travel, you know, and you know, Lior, I, I have this mission to to visit all 196 countries of the world, but I don't travel for, for countries. I travel for people first. Like I'm all about meeting the people and when you meet someone like-minded you, it's, it's typically a friend for life. It's amazing, it's so inspiring. We uh, just met in uh, Vietnam, uh, Hoi Yang, uh, one guy who had an uh, Instagram page with over 1 million uh, followers in a food niche. So we decided to make a partnership with him about the Shopify store of food because we know about Shopify, he knows about food and about how to grow an Instagram page, which was amazing. And that's also just came from this, that we just came there, we didn't know him before, that he will be there. Um, cool. Uh, by, by the way, how, how did you start your new project and the community? Both of them are interesting. Um, I will take even a step further back. Um, I, I did not plan to be a digital nomad. I didn't even know it's a thing. I just had a normal job and because of some technical issues, I had to work remote for a little while. And when I could finally go back to the office, I told them like, listen, I, I don't want to go back to the office. I enjoyed being in Taipei or in Japan and other places and they respected this uh, choice and allowed me. And only then I discovered about the digital nomad world. Okay. Um, now, how I started my community, uh, Digital Nomads Israel, it really was, it's one of these decisions that you, you don't have a vision. You don't understand what you do. You go on Facebook, you click on create group because you want to meet other digital nomads in Israel. I added like five friends that I knew in Israel who worked remote. And two years later, it's um, almost a 12,000 people group, events, uh, digital nomad conferences in Israel, meetups uh, all over the world. So uh, it was really the, the need to communicate and, co and connect with uh, digital nomads in Israel. And I, I never did any advertisement. I never, I just, it's, you know, people tell people tell people and it, it blew up. Um, Sounds good. So it, yeah, so, so it was not like a decision that, okay, I'm going to build a community to connect people and, and have all the information in one place and empower them. It was not this. It was like, hey, I just want to meet other nomads here, uh, like I do in, in other cities. Um, and yeah, it just turned to be amazing. You know, I, I give talks. Uh, part of what I do, I, I try to motivate and inspire people, uh, not, not just to travel and work remote, but just to, to live the life they want because life is short and there's no reason to do something we don't like or enjoy. So through these talks, I met a lot of people and these people uh, joined my community. So this helped me to, to grow it to where it is. Now, uh, Globe Gliders, it's, it's a little bit different story because Globe Gliders was actually, I, I had this idea in mind for a long time. It was a little bit different spin-off. I wanted to create um, more of a membership discount card for uh, digital nomads and it's something that I'm doing for digital nomads Israel right now but then uh, my my co-founder Nimrod Gabriel um, 
he reached out to me actually through Instagram because he saw what I'm about. And we had a few conversations about the digital nomad lifestyle. And we had the same ideas and the same passion and the same understanding. And we, we, we dealt with the same challenges. So it's like, hey, let's, let's do something about it. You know, how, how do we fix this problem uh, for us and for others? And then it happens. And I don't think I would be able to do it. Uh, I definitely wouldn't be able to do it with him and without, without, without him and without my other partners. Um, you know, it goes back to why it's so important to meet uh, people and right people and good people. And he is very smart and he's knowledgeable. And there are a lot of things that he knows million times better than I do and I, I grow and I develop throughout this process and I bring different things to this game. Um, yeah, and Global Ideas, we just launched. Um, I'll take this opportunity. We, we literally, the website just went up a couple of days ago and we're now looking for like 10, 20 uh, beta users. So if anyone here would like to participate in we, we didn't plan it uh you are uh, but I'm, I'm i'm saying it but if anyone here wants to participate in the beta program we're also giving a nice discount it can save you a nice amount of money on your accommodation and office spaces uh reach out to me or leave the comments here um or reach out to me on, on facebook where is dean or anymore dean kuchel and i'm, I'm happy to to tell you more and onboard you on our uh, new plan Cool, I will also post it in our uh, Facebook group in the middle of this video, uh, your uh, contact details, uh, so people can contact you, it sounds really cool. Yeah, any, any person that spends between, uh, I would say, 800 to $1,200 a month on accommodation and maybe office space as well, uh, will, will save at least $200, if not even $400 on, on their accommodation on a monthly basis, and many of them, can stay in the same place they live right now, just get the payment through us and we will get a discount for them and we, we take care of everything. So th this is where the real value of, of Global Ideas is. Amazing, couldn't you do this uh, six months before? <laughs> it would help me. Uh, nice, okay. Uh, do you think that everyone can uh, become a di digital nomad? Uh, I mean, not about the personality, but more about limitations of age, relationship statuses, kids, uh, things like this, that, does it affect uh, the, the digital moment? Anything is possible. And you know, in, my, in, our, in my community, we have a lot of families and we have couples, and we have, of course, many singles and individuals. Um, and there's also people over 60 in our community, which are digital nomads. It, it does add a little bit complexity if you travel with kids uh, and it's more things that you need to take care of, you know, whether it's a baby um, or a kid or a child when you need to put kindergarten and schooling. So it's a little bit more challenging now. There are solutions forming and coming up, but it's not there yet. There's not enough infrastructure like uh, if you're an individual or just a couple traveling together. Uh, so anyone can, yes, absolutely. I meet families every day. I meet people in their 60s and 70s working remote every day. Um, it just doesn't make it easier. That's why I think people should start early, try it, see if it's for you, build, build also the foundation so it can support you if you're now in a relationship or now you want to have a child and start a family. Um, so yeah, it's possible and, and and there are more and more services than enable you. Like, you know, I spoke about Google Pi, Globe Gliders, um, credit cards that allow you to pay anywhere without uh, transaction fees. In Th Thailand, there are schools for kids now, um, for digital nomads. So there are more and more services to support and enable it. But most of the, the limitations are here. Is what I hear from people is like, okay, Dean, of course you can travel because you're single, but I have a child, so I can't. And like, instead of thinking about, oh, I can't, try to think about, oh, okay, how do I solve, what solutions are there for health insurance for kids? Or what can I do to school my kids? And those who ask this question this way also get the answers and they do. Nice. It's amazing. Uh, I think also a solution can be just to stay more in places, 
no? Like to, to, if you move less, it's not easier. Yeah, you can travel slower and definitely people with, with kids travel slower and it's good for everyone. Uh, of course, there are visa limitations, but not, not, not that big, especially not in Asia or South America. Um, so yeah, stay one, two, three months in a place, enjoy it. Uh, I actually think there is a huge reward for kids uh, who grow up in, in such an environment and they're exposed to different cultures and beliefs and races at a very young age. Uh, they speak multiple languages. Um, everything that I've seen and met so far has just been an incredible. The, the life smart of these people, the uh, EQ of these kids, uh, it's on another level. I mean, one, one thing that I just remember now uh, that also happened because of you uh, and helped me a lot. I think that this was my like, smartest decision that I made uh, when I moved for half year. Uh, is to take a small uh, baggage a trolley. It was it was like so helpful and it was amazing. So I, I wasn't sure where this is going, but um, yeah, this is uh, this is the best advice I can tell give anyone. Um, I always joke that there are multiple ways to pack your stuff. Um, you know, to fold, to roll, or to shrink. And I say that the best way to pack your stuff is to take less. Um, you don't need a big suitcase to collect endless amount of experiences. Um, digital nomads go to the courting space with the same t-shirts and the same pants every day, coming in tongs in their flip-flops. Um, tongs is the Australian version of flip-flops, um, not tongs. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> people enjoy life. They, they don't care about all the, the symbols, you know, what brands you have and all these things. No one cares for it anymore. And every digital nomad I met, whether you do drop shipping or marketing, whether you make a dollar a month or $10 million a month, everyone did the same mistake of traveling with like a big suitcase and another backpack and another day pack. And after three months, they were just, they were just looking for someone to take the suitcase back to the parents' house and get rid of the stuff. Um, sensation of freedom. It's not the job you have, it's how many things are holding you to the ground. And the lighter I am, you know, if I need, to, I'm now in Australia, if I need to go to Singapore or to Samoa or to New Zealand in 10 minutes, it's all it takes me, 10 minutes to go home, pack my ship, next destination. Uh, I pay less luggage fees when I take flights because I, I have a carry-on, so I never lose my luggage. Um, it makes everything so so much easier. You save time when you go out of the airplane. And you save money because when you don't have a luggage, a big a big space to store things, I see a lot of nice things when I walk around. Like, oh yeah, I want a souvenir. I want to buy this nice, uh, another pair of shoes. But then you ask yourself, wait, where am I going to put this pair of shoes? So here you go, $80 that I save, you know? Um, a lot of things, that some, I, I don't buy anymore any much. I'm, I'm in the minimalist now. Um, a lot of things doesn't have much value for me when it comes to objects, but um, it, this is the process by limiting my living space. Amazing. Uh, if, if, about it also, it's true that you don't have space in your suitcase, but as I said, it's a benefit. It's not a, like cons, it's, it's something that really helpful because you just don't spend time on searching for more and more stuff to buy. And, yeah, you, and you don't need it. it. And it's not like I look like a bum or, you know, I, I, I have this shirt that cost me $10 in some simple store. You, you don't need, even if you want to dress nicely and you want to mix things, uh, you can do it on the cheap. And also, um, because I don't buy much, so I, so I save a lot of money on clothing, for example, so it's easier for me to change. Uh, I use the shirt, it's done use it for two months, all right, give it away, throw it out, buy a new one. Um, it, it's become small expenses, especially as you travel. If you go in, in London to any shop, you'll pay $20, $30 for a shirt, uh, even a t-shirt. But when you're in Asia, how much is a t-shirt in, in Bali or Thailand or Vietnam? $3, $4, $5, $10? Yeah. Three to five. <laughs> yeah. 
Nice. Like, okay. But, yeah. Just you know. Yeah. I just want to say like by moving, uh, and you know, I, I give the most of our listeners um, are living in first world countries, OECD countries, with cost of living which is fairly high. Uh, only by moving out and traveling the world, you you start to save money just by this. Because also always people associate travel with expensive, but travel actually allowed me to save more money than I saved before. With the same salary. So I think that if you, like right now, you spend less than what you would spend if you stay in Israel, for example? Israel, for sure, because Israel is a very expensive city. But um, yes, absolutely. Absolutely. I, you know, so right now I'm in Australia, which is fairly expensive. But even then, I don't spend what I spent when I was in the USA or in Israel or in London. Um, but more than half of the year I spend in Sri Lanka and in, in Bali and Medellin. These are cheap places. So yeah. same income, I say, yeah. How, how much time do you spend in Israel? Uh, I spend about two months a year, uh, six, six to eight year, uh, weeks. Or if you ask my mom, not enough. But um, yeah. oh, <laughs> I have nephews in Israel that I am crazy for and I miss them badly. Uh, but yeah, I try to spend about a month or two in Israel. Nice. And now, because you come back to countries, you already have like, people that you know in the countries and you come and meet them again and again, different places. Yeah, yeah. I, I travel lots to visit friends, more than I travel now to, to explore new places. Um, so, yeah, absolutely. Amazing. Um, and I also, I, I want to say here something about, you know, about this, about my travel patterns and why I go visit friends. Because uh, the digital nomad lifestyle can be a little bit uh, lonely. I never felt it. I'm not a person that feels lonely. I'm very good with my, I can entertain myself. I'm very extrovert. So I go places and talk to people. I make friends. I start events. I create meetups. Uh, but for others, it might not be as easy. And loneliness is, is the new epidemic of, of our century and our generation. So uh, it's something that you need to be aware of. And this is why I also recommend to start with soft places like Medellin, Canary Islands, Bansko, uh, Bali, and, and Thailand, where you can meet other people to support you. And a sense of community is something that eventually you will need. Maybe in the beginning, you can travel by yourself. You meet a lot of travelers, backpackers, you party, you enjoy. But um, as the excitement died down a little bit and you want a little bit more slower pace of travel, you need, you, you will start to want people around you. You will want to see the same people over and over again. Um, and this is something that after six years of heavy travel, I, I'm trying, I'm starting to see uh, that I need, I want to hang out with the same people. This is why I travel sometimes to Singapore to visit my friends and see them for dinner. Uh, or I'll go to Melbourne for the weekend to meet with the people. So something that you need, I think any person should, take into account because connection and community and friends is something global that we all need. Nice. Um, cool. Um, what is the best advice you can give to those who want to start and work remotely and travel the world? Uh, I think I spoiled it a little bit before I, when we talked about the luggage. So I think... Yeah really the best advice and that will be surprising to so many people who want to travel or work remote um, is to have a smaller carry a smaller suitcase just live off a carry on so this is my day pack this is where i have my laptop my camera uh, and then i have another carry on that's it it's about 16 17 kilos or um, i would say something like 32 to 34 pounds of gear and that's all I own. And even if you don't travel, if you, even if you live at home right now, start cutting down of your expenses, what you spend on, on clothes, uh, accessories, and so on, gadgets. Start to live off a smaller, um, have a smaller closet footprint. This state of mind is what will enable you to, to travel light. Um, all of a sudden you will see a ticket uh, going from Houston to Panama for $65 and you don't need to worry about what do I do with all my stuff and you just take all the shit you have, take your laptop and a charger, don't forget the charger and you go to Panama. 
Um, so really, travel light. That's, that's my best advice. And then my second advice would be the people. The people you, met, you meet will shape you, will help you. Um, so go out, meet people. Don't be afraid to strike a conversation. I was very shy when I started my, my nomadic journey. I wouldn't talk to anyone. No guys, let alone girls. Um, I understood that all human beings want to have this human touch. They want to share the story. They want to, to listen to yours. So be the first to start a conversation. You sit, you sit next to someone on the train. Hey, how are you? Sit now, someone uh, next to someone on the airplane. Ask them, hey, are you traveling for business or fun? Or uh, one of the things I like to do is, are you also traveling for fun? or for business, or are you also traveling solo? And by, by also, you already give them your answer. So you make yourself vulnerable, you share something of yourself, uh, so they feel more uh, comfortable answering. Um, you know, I, I, build, I build trust with people because I, I meet people all over the world and different cultures and languages. And I build this trust um, by making myself transparent and clear. Exactly like I put myself on this video and I'm willing to talk about everything in my life. Um, use this, uh, the, the truth and transparency is the best, um, the, the, the nicest thing you can offer someone. It's a very helpful thing because I think that that's what usually people are really struggling with, like create the connections, start the conversations. You feel, do you feel that you improved in uh, like to start conversations with people and start talking with people during this? If, if, sorry. if I think what, I'm sorry? That you improved in like communication with people and start. I, I didn't understand the word. Like every time you say it, like, it's like uh, popping in my headphone. I asked if you feel that you improved in like starting. To make growth? In uh, creating the connections and talk with people. Uh, starting conversations very much very much I was not like that uh, at the beginning but I, I learned I saw I saw when people strike conversation with me I listen what they do I, I watch what they do and I learn from them and I built myself this set of uh, you know questions like pickup lines <laughs> but I, I use these pickup lines not with with girls but I use these pickup lines with every person that I meet um, you know, I like to, to talk about countries and uh, a, a, almost every person I meet today, I can tell them that I visited the country and what I love about the country. Um, <laughs> so that's, that's an easy, uh, I met someone from um, Kosovo <laughs> and I met someone who's from Sarajevo in Bosnia uh, and they're so surprised to meet someone who's been to the country. Um, these are not very traveled countries. So for me, that's, that's one conversation driver. But yeah, I develop this set of questions that I like to ask people in different situations. Um, and you'll be surprised, you'll be surprised how, how excited and happy people are to, to talk. And also, I learned the art of understanding when people don't feel like having a conversation with you. And I'll walk away or I'll ask them or I'll tell them I'm sorry to disturb you and I'll just walk. And, um, or I'll ask them, if you don't want to have this conversation, it's fine. And, and pe people are good. And if we don't ask, and if we don't try, um, nothing will happen. You know, if you don't try a dropshipping store, you won't wake up one day and have a dropshipping store. And if you don't ask this girl out, she'll never go out with you and never ask for a raise in your job. You'll never get this raise. So we have nothing to afraid. We're all human beings. We're all made of the same thing. Uh, whether you're Elon Musk or uh, any, any other person, we're all human beings. So don't be afraid to be you. And okay. that's what you get, and it's the best. I'm so happy that we had you in our channel. I still have one question, but I think that that was one of the most inspiring conversations that we had here. So thank you for this. Um, there is any person who helped you uh, during your way to start your way, someone who affected you or influenced you uh, the most? Well, my mom, definitely. Uh, she's a travel guide, so she inspired me to travel the world. But um, yes, there is one people, there, there are a few people, but there's one person 
which is actually very famous in the dropshipping community. I don't know, maybe you know him, Johnny FD. I think he's in Copangano. Okay. Uh, right now he's in Sri Lanka. Uh, he was in uh, Chiang Mai. He's the guy who is uh, doing the Nomad Summit in, in Chiang Mai. Um, but I, I never met him in person. I did chat with him a few times, uh, mostly to thank him for what he did for me without him knowing. But he has, um, he has a, a blog called Travel Like a Boss. He has a podcast, Travel Like a Boss, and he shares everything about his life, how much money he makes, how much money he spends the places he go, uh, the challenges of being away from his parents, the challenges of not having community, uh, the, the struggle with his uh, girlfriend, um, the struggle with his business. And his stories inspired me at the very beginning, six years ago, to go on this journey. I uh, highly recommend this podcast for anyone out there uh, called Travel Like a Boss. He, almost every week, he interview a, a, a different person that they have stories like mine and yours. People that had like a, a nice office job and decided to leave it, or some English teacher that now does drop shipping and make $30,000 and live in Korea. And these stories make you understand it's possible. These people are not gods. They are not made of something different material. Um, so definitely big, been a big influence and a driving force in my uh, nomadic lifestyle and what I do. And, you know, I created community, I created events, a lot, I, I took a lot of inspiration from him. So check out Johnny FD, um, he's, he's a big, he made his money uh, doing drop shipping and promoting drop shipping. Uh, also a lot of controversial, but when you're successful, I think it always drives also con people that don't like you and like you. I think if people don't like you, you're successful. It means that you're successful. Um, but for me, it was very helpful. And the general advice here is, any person, find yourself a mentor. Um, and, and maybe you might, need, you might need to change mentors over time, but find yourself a mentor and, and learn from them and, and, and learn from their mistakes and from their successes. Um, it's very difficult to, to succeed on your own and come up with, your own, with our own uh, success recipe without guidance, in my opinion. And when you so, find a mentor, try really to listen and be open and follow him. I agree with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I, I learn every day. I learn every day. No matter how successful I, I feel sometimes with my community and the Globe Gliders and other things I do, and even as a customer success manager, something I do for 10 years or more, uh, I always know there is something for me to learn. And uh, I, I walk to the state of mind to every meeting, every, every time I meet a person, I know there is something I can learn from them. So that, that's been sensational for me throughout this trip. I said I travel for people, not for places. Amazing. Did you have like sometimes hard times with it that you work remotely? Where no. People, no? Bowling life. Yeah, I had. I had, uh, <laughs> of course, um, definitely less. Definitely, definitely less. Um, life is, can be very easy. Um, as a digital nomad because you can escape situation. You don't need to, to deal with all the politics. If you don't like a place or the weather, you can just hop on a plane and go somewhere. So it's easy to run away from problems. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I, I felt a few times that like, I want a relationship and it's very difficult to form if you decide to travel every week to a different continent. And sometimes I wanted to have more friends or I miss my family, I miss my nephew badly. They grow up so fast and we don't see them. So you give up on certain things. Um, my connections with my friends in Israel, people I grew up with, has changed over the years. We're still friends, but it's not the same level. So uh, th these are things that change, but accepted that there are, there are times, there, there are some things that you gain and some that you lose, and you just need to make sure that what you gain is, is more than you lose. Um, I did have one, one time that I kind of lost my only income, okay? So I had one contract and I lost it. And then I said like, what's now? Like, I'm not, I'm not a digital nomad anymore. I, I cannot afford this lifestyle. Um, how do I find like new online income? And so uh, th this was like kind of a panic moment. And the turned out to be, of course, very good for me at the end, but 
in the moment you don't know what's the future. So I think what I didn't do and I changed since is to, to have a backup plan. To have enough saving, save like three to six, even nine months of living if you can, but start with three, grow it to six, save money, have discussion in case something is, is going wrong um, and have multiple streams of income or have a plan in mind, okay? Um, of course, the great thing about drop shipping is that if you have this talent, so you can sell beds and if beds now is not a good market, you sell surfing boards and if surfing boards not good business, you can start a, your Corona masks business. Um, so it's a great talent to have. It's like marketing. You can market anything basically, right? Um, so have this plan. I think in English you say plan for the rainy day, plan for a rainy day. So have a plan for a rainy day because you, when you're a nomad and you're now in Tonga in the Pacific Ocean and you lost your source of income, uh, you, you, it's going to be costly to, to travel back home and start maybe to get used to normal life again. Um, so yeah, <laughs> have a backup plan, have some savings, think about the rainy day. Don't, don't think this, the good things that you have in life going to last forever. Amazing. I see that our conversation became really long because it was really interesting for me. <laughs> uh, so. I lost sense of time. I have no clue how long it's been going on. <laughs> Over a <an> hour. <laughs> Surprising. Um, so I really appreciate that you came today. Uh, do you have something last that you want to share with people? Something about anything that you want to say, even that you share a lot? <laughs> I don't know. Um, I have more tips or more stuff, but <laughs> no. I would say this. Check out globaliders.com. Tell me if you like it, if you want to try it. Then I would say, um, check out where is Dean. This is my, um, my social media name, where is Dean. Uh, it's my, my journey to 196 countries of the world. You can follow me on Instagram or on Facebook. Um, that, that's where I'm mostly active. And then, you know, I, I will end this with how I end every post and every talk and every conversation. Say yes and go explore. Um, this is my mantra. This is what I believe in. Uh, I say yes to things. I say yes, yes to, to, you ask me, hey, do you want to talk and interview? You know, I didn't ask you, what is it for? Uh, how many people? When? What? Like, I just said yes. And, and it's the same when people ask me, hey, do you want to go to a flamenco show? Never been to a flamenco show, but flamenco? Flamenco. Sorry. Yeah. Let's do it. And do you want to, do you want to go to... I don't know, some places. Yes, yes, and yes. I go, I meet people. Everything good that happened to me in life, it's because I said yes. Nothing bad, or sorry, nothing good came out of saying no. So become yes people, be positive, say yes to things, say yes to experiences. Um, the, the world is so much, it's so beautiful and 10 times better than a million times what the news try to make it. 10 of the news. Uh, I live in the world peace since I turned off the news. I, you know, as an Israeli, um, I'm not allowed, I'm not supposed to go places like Dubai, Oman, Malaysia, Indonesia. Um, I travel these places and I met people who are so far from what I, the, the media has told me that, you know, they want to kill me and they hate you and because you're Jewish and because you're Israeli. And it's like, people love me and people enjoy meeting me and enjoy listening to my story and I enjoy listening to theirs and we share a dream or two. Um, if or if they're Muslims, we, we didn't share a drink, but a shisha maybe. But uh, it's, it's a beautiful world there. And this is why I say, say yes and go explore. Say yes to these good opportunities um, and, and go explore a beautiful world. That's all. That, that's, my, that's my message to the world. Namaste. Thank you for saying yes and uh, coming to this amazing interview. Uh, super inspiring interview. And in general for this that you growing this amazing uh, digital moment community projects that now will help people. Thanks again. And uh, I wish uh, everyone to start their way and explore and say yes, as Dean said. Thank you. Thank you very much. And again, anyone has any question, I'm an open book, super happy to help and uh, save the soul, help you to become a digital nomad. <laughs>